One, Andrew Gosden. In 2007, Andrew lived with his parents and sister in Doncaster. On the morning of September 14th, he got ready for school. However, rather than attending class that day, he waited in a nearby park until his parents had left for work. Upon returning to the house, he changed out of his uniform, placed it in the washing machine, and then collected his PSP, leaving the charger behind. There was a hundred pounds in his room, however, he did not take this, but instead, he withdrew two hundred pounds from his bank account, went to Doncaster Railway Station, and purchased a one-way ticket to London before boarding the 9.35 a.m. train to King's Cross. Witnesses saw him getting on the train alone. The ticket seller on Doncaster Station remembered Gosden because he refused a return ticket despite it only being half a pound more. Eyewitnesses on the train have since reported seeing Andrew, describing him as quiet. He had played with his PSP for the duration of the journey. He would be captured on CCTV at approximately 11.20 a.m. CCTV imagery of Gosden at King's Cross was not checked until 27 days after his disappearance, by which time the trail had gone cold. CCTV images showed Andrew leaving King's Cross Station on the day that he vanished. That was the last confirmed sighting of him. One year after Andrew's disappearance, an unidentified man spoke into the intercom at the doorway to Leo Minster Police Station, claiming to have information about the case. When an officer arrived to answer the door, however, the man had disappeared. There were fears that Andrew may have been groomed by someone that he met online. This was investigated, but searches of his sister's laptop, which he occasionally used, and the school computers found nothing. His parents held the belief that he did not have any social media or email accounts that they were aware of. He also did not own a mobile phone. There was speculation that Andrew may have traveled to the capital to end his own life, his family doubted this, but did not rule it out. They paid a company to search the Thames using sonar equipment. A body was found, but it was not Andrew. A further theory was that Andrew ran away in search of a new life. It was reported that his favorite TV show featured a character that left his old life and changed his identity. His parents have continued to put money in his bank account just in case he needs it, However, it has remained untouched since the day he left. After more than 10 years, there is still no trace of Andrew Gosden or any explanation for his mysterious train trip. 2. Daniel Entwistle On May 3, 2003, seven-year-old Daniel Entwistle from Great Yarmouth, England, arrived home after going to the local store to run an errand for his mother. Upon re-entering the house, Daniel asked his father, David Entwistle, for money to buy some sweets. He left again and was captured on store CCTV. Daniel was caught one final time on the store's surveillance camera, cycling by. This was the last confirmed sighting of the boy. Daniel's red and white bike was found along a harbor wall near the River Yar, about half a mile from his home, around 3 a.m. Sunday, May 4th. Authorities thought he may have fallen into the river and drowned. However, his body was never found, but it could have been swept out to the North Sea. However, Daniel was afraid of water and could not swim, so it doesn't seem logical that he would climb the harbor wall, which would put him at risk of falling into the river. In 2003, Joseph Segor came forward a few days after Daniel disappeared and said he had seen Daniel playing with some kids near a raised wall by the River Yar, where Daniel's bike was found, around lunchtime on May 3rd and again around 4 p.m. that same day. Zagor said Daniel and other children often played there. What's interesting about Zagor's claim is that it conflicts with Daniel's mother, Paula's, statement on where she and the family went that day. Paula claimed the whole family went shopping earlier in the day, returned home, and then Paula went to rest as she felt unwell. Yet Zagor claimed to have seen Daniel playing around lunchtime. Despite a large police search of the area, Daniel was never found. 
Heartbreakingly, due to few funds and no PR campaign, his disappearance stopped being reported by the media after only a few days, and the case was closed by police just three months after he had vanished. The boy's father, David Entwistle, died in 2015. It is worth noting that David was convicted of having sex with a 12-year-old girl back in 1985. Police were aware of the conviction when Daniel vanished, but it was never made public. David was interviewed by detectives before his death in the search for his son, but never made a suspect. Daniel remains missing to this day. 3. The Disappearance of Jared Negriti On July 19, 1991, Jared Negriti, a 12-year-old boy from El Monte, California, traveled to Camp Taquitz in the San Bernardino National Forest. He was going on an overnight camping trip with his Boy Scout troop, and they planned to hike up Mount Gorgonio, which is 3,500 meters. As the troop neared the top of the summit, Jared grew tired. Another group of hikers spotted Jared straggling behind and notified the scout troop leader at the mountain summit, but the leader, an experienced hiker, told him he would be collected on the way back. However, when the troop returned, Jared was nowhere to be found. An extensive search was conducted of the area by rescue teams. They found a lot of matching shoe prints and some items which belonged to Jared, including his backpack, beef jerky, and candy wrappers. In spite of these clues, they could not find any trace of Jared. This story would probably be a straightforward and tragic case of a boy wandering off and succumbing to the elements, but Jared managed to leave behind one very haunting image. Jared's camera was found in the woods, and its film contained 12 recent photographs, which were eventually developed. Most of the photos were landscape scenes, apparently taken before Jared went missing. But the final picture on the roll of film was a ghastly photograph of the scout's eyes and nose, taken with the aid of the camera's flash, possibly at night. Family members said it appeared Jared pointed his camera at his face and snapped the picture. It seemed possible that the boy had lost the camera while sliding down a portion of the mountainside. Police said that Jared looked very scared in the image and that the mysterious picture was taken after he went missing. Despite the discovery of the camera and of its pictures, Jared remains missing 26 years on. Three. 